Welcome in to another weekend of NFL picks for this week's Week 8 action. Now, this week has a ton of big favorites on the board, so if you're looking for different types of bets and you're looking to make some parlays and teasers, you should have plenty of different options to either bet some teams up or bet them down to be either smaller favorites or bigger underdogs. Now, this week, I have three different parlays with money lines and different scoring props. Now, while you're listening, if you like this content, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more NFL picks as well as plenty of other picks in hockey and all different soccer leagues throughout the year. Here we go. Number one parlay. I'm starting off with the Saints and the Colts. The three and four Saints go to Indy to face the three and four Colts. Last week, the Saints played on Thursday Night Football, so they'll have some extra rest, but they lost to Jacksonville at home 31 to 24. The Colts with backup quarterback Gardner Minshew look to be on their way to beating the Browns with their own backup, P.J. Walker, but Cleveland scored late to take the 39 to 38 win. So the Colts both put up 38 points against the league's top defense and allowed one of the worst current quarterbacks in the league, P.J. Walker, to lead the Browns to 39 points. Now, only two teams have played to more overs than a 4-3 and three rate. Indy are one of those teams. They're 5-2. and two. Chicago is the other at 6-1. and one. Now, If we look at average points per game scored and allowed, New Orleans, they're averaging 19 points a game. They allow 18.1. Indy, they're scoring 25.4. They're allowing 27.3, which is third worst in the league, 30th. Now, the prop that I like here is... Uh, both teams to score 10 or more points. There's multiple options at different books to go 14 or more, 15 or more, 20 or more. <laughs> One of the lower ones and easier ones to hit in most games because obviously all you need is a touchdown and a field goal. It's both teams to score 10 or more. So if we look at New Orleans games, that has hit in five of seven. They have missed it, scoring 10 once. They've also held one opponent to under 10. For Indy, it's a perfect 7-7. Seven and seven. The lowest points Indy has scored in the game is 20. The lowest they've allowed is 16. And in fact, if you were betting both teams to score 20 or more points, that would be 5-7. and seven. And there was one game where a team hit 19, so they were one point away from being 6-7 and seven to both teams scoring 20 or more. I'm just going both teams to score 10 or more between the Saints and the Colts. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with the Rams and the Cowboys. The Rams fell at home 24-17 to Pittsburgh last week, while Dallas is coming in fresh off of a bye week. Cowboys have been about six-point favorites all week in this game. Very little line movement. The total is set 45 and a half. Again, looking at average scoring and points scored and points allowed, the Rams score 22.1 points per game. They're allowing 20.1. 20, uh, 20 Cowboys, they're scoring 25.7 points per game. They're allowing 16.7, so that is one of the better defenses in the league. Bets on both teams to score 10 or more in the Rams games have been 6-7, and seven, the one game that didn't hit they held arizona to nine points the cowboys the that bet has gone five and seven they've held the giants to zero points and the patriots to three so those were the two that didn't now, dallas has put up some big scores versus weak opponents but the rams don't have a great defense either they do have an exciting offense with stafford cup nakua and atwell capable of at least getting 10 points in this game i think i think we should easily see 10 points from both teams both teams score 10 or more between the rams and the cowboys one more of these, both teams have scored 10 or more points, and it's Eagles and Commanders. The Commanders usually play the Eagles tight. That was proved the case earlier this month when the game went to overtime, and the Eagles won 34-31. to Philly had their way with Miami last week, winning 31-17. to They had more first downs, 26-12. to Time of possession, 36, just over 36 minutes to a little over 23. And they got to Tua for three sacks. Speaking of sacks, Commanders QB Sam Howell has been taken down in a league high rate of 40 times already. He's on pace to break David Carr's historical record. Last week, his offensive line allowed him to get sacked five times in a 14-7 loss to the Giants. That's even worse when you consider the Giants had previously only had five sacks the entire season. It's going to be bad news against the Philadelphia Eagles team. who are tied in third in sacks right now. They could get into the backfield and get after Howell all game long. Given we just saw both of these teams score 30 points a few weeks ago when they last played, each hitting 10 or more looks to be quite feasible in this game, especially when you consider that if one of the teams you thought might do it might be obviously Washington being the weaker team, they did it when they were in Philly, they should be able to do it when they're at home. It's also happened in eight of nine recent games between these teams. It's happened in all seven Eagles games this year. They've scored an average of 26.6. They're allowing an average of 20.1. It's happened in five of seven Commanders games this season, with Washington being the team to come up short in the two times that it didn't hit. Washington scores an average of 20. They allow an average of 27.1. I think we can see at least 10 from both teams here. Both teams have scored 10 or more. The final leg will go a little different. It's Chiefs and Broncos. The Chiefs are about seven-point favorites heading into Denver. 
They just beat the Broncos 19-8 in Kansas City on October 12th in a game with high winds that could have impacted, obviously impacted, the offenses in that game. So quite possibly the score could have been higher. It might be higher this time around. Mahomes beats the Broncos a lot and the AFC West a lot as well. Mahomes is 12-0 versus Denver. He's 29-3 straight up against the AFC West. Now, the Broncos, they offer plenty of spots for the Chiefs to exploit in this game. 167.3 rushing yards they give up on average is the highest in the league. So too is the 1,005 total rushing yards they've allowed both our league highs or league worsts. Against tight ends, Denver's given up the most receptions, 42. Receiving yards, uh, 486. And that could mean big things for the likes of Pacheco and Kelsey if you were looking to target some different player props in this game. The Chiefs should win this game. However, divisional dogs are often a good bet. So if we want to be very safe, which is what we do with these parlays, we'll look to the Chiefs on the alternate spread. Bet them all the way to plus four and a half. If they lose, it won't be by more than three or four points. So KC plus four and a half. Rams and Cowboys both to score 10. Philly and Washington both to score 10. And the Saints and Indy both to score 10. It's coming in at minus 139 odds. And we have one more parlay with three games, the three-team money line parlay. With We have many games, like I said, that have big favorites. I've picked three that look, in my opinion, to be the most safe. We'll go with Ravens and Cardinals to start. The 5-2 Ravens, who are also 5-2 ATS. They'll travel to Arizona. They face the 1-6 Cardinals, who are 3-4 ATS. For the Cards, those four non-covers have all come in their last four games, which have all been losses. In those losses, they've been outscored by 19, 14, 17, and 10 points. James Conner was already on the IR, and now tight end Zach Ertz has joined him, so they are really running out of offensive weapons right here. Where the Cardinals find the offense to match the Ravens, who have won a three of four, with wins coming by 25, 8, and 32 points last week over a strong Lions team is tough to say. Even if Kyler Murray does come back in, he doesn't have much to work with, with the likes of Conner and Ertz being out, and he will surely be rusty if he does get the start. Baltimore also has only allowed seven offensive touchdowns all season to their opponents. I think the Ravens look like a good pick to start off this parlay. Next up, we're going to Sunday Night Football. It's the Bears and the Chargers with Justin Fields out of action last week. In step, Division II rookie quarterback Tyson Badgett to lead the Bears. And while he didn't do anything special, throwing just 162 yards and one touchdown, it was enough for the Bears to get the second win of the season as they defeated the Raiders 30-12. But the Raiders were also without their starting QB, Jimmy Garoppolo, leaving Brian Hoyer and Aiden O'Connell to combine for a whopping 204 yards, one touchdown, and three INTs. So that certainly helped Badgen's cause also getting to play against some backups. Chicago's only other win came against the Commanders, 40-20, to while their five losses have come by 18, 10, 31, 3, and 6 points. Defensively, the Bears have been getting carved up. They allow 26.9 points per game, which ranks 28th against the pass, or 29th. But against the run, they are an impressive fifth. Ella, the Chargers are 2-4. and four. The Chargers never led last week when they played in Kansas City, and they went on to lose 31-17. to 17. But this should be, and really has to be, the week the Chargers offense comes alive. They are averaging 24 points per game, which is 11th. They should be able to take advantage of the Chicago team. Now, LA is mid-pack when it comes to rushing. They're only 16th, but their passing, ga passing game is putting up the 8th most yards per game versus a 29th ranked bear secondary. Herbert needs to take advantage and get some scores on the board and get the morale up in the Chargers camp. But the Chargers defense has been every bit as poor as Chicago's. They give up 26.9 points per game. That's 25th. They're worse in the league against the pass 32nd and they're 11th versus the run. Now, if this was Fields under center for Chicago, I do think this game would look to be a clear over with two terrible defenses. And Chicago is the best over team this season. But I think we should just go for the Chargers win here at home on Sunday Night Football against this rookie quarterback. I think if they lose, Brandon Staley gets, should be fired. So let's just back a win for the Chargers on Sunday Night Football. And we will roll this parlay into Monday Night Football with Raiders and Lions. This should be a huge bounce back spot for, bounce back spot for the Lions on Monday Night Football. They were the talk of the town heading into Week 7. Everything was going pretty well. And then they got smacked 38-6. to that was no doubt embarrassing for Dan Campbell, and he'll want to refocus his team heading in to primetime on Monday. Campbell's 28-13 ATS, and Detroit is covered in 14 of their past 17 games. The Raiders were already struggling to score with Jimmy G under center. They only average 16 points per game, which is 30th. He's still questionable with a back injury, and if he can't go, that means more Brian Hoyer and Aiden O'Connell. We just talked about how poor they were last week. 
Neither looked good. Hoyer is also 0-13 in his past 13 starts, and O'Connell is a rookie. The Lions score 24.9 points per game, which is 8th overall, and that should just be too much for the Raiders to overcome here. So we'll go Lions win. So that's Ravens, Chargers, and Lions on the money line. It's minus 117 odds there. So there we have it, seven games, two parlays where we just need a few big favorites to come in and a few other games with both teams hitting 10 or more points. Now, what are your favorite week eight picks? Drop them in the comments. Give this video a like on your way out. And best of luck with all of your NFL week eight picks this weekend.